Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the fourth video in the LVGL series, and today we will see how to send and retrieve data from the display. I am going to use the UART to send the data from the computer to the MCU, which will then display on the UI. I will also use the ADC to read the potentiometer, and modify the arc on the display according to it. To send the information from display to the MCU, we will use three buttons on the display, which will be used, to control the LEDs on the MCU. Let's continue with the previous project on the LVGL. Here I have imported the project to the IDE. We need to include UART, ADC, and LEDs to our project, so let's open the Cube MX. The Nucleo and Discovery boards support the virtual COM port for the UART, so I am going to use the same. Here is the schematics of the Nucleo L496. You can see the pins PG7 and PG8 are connected to the SD Link RX and TX pins. These pins are actually connected to the UART peripheral of the SD Link, and hence we can use the SD Link USB as the virtual COM port. You can also use an external USB to TTL module to communicate to the computer using the UART. Let's enable the low power UART in the asynchronous mode. The default pins assigned are the pins PC0 and PC1. Let's configure the pin PG7 and PG8 as the RX and TX pins for the UART. Now we need to configure the parameters. I am setting the board rate to 115200. The word length should be 8 bits. Let's also enable the global interrupt for the UART. Now we will configure the ADC. Let's enable the ADC 1 channel 1 in the single ended mode. The pin PC0 has been selected as the channel 1 pin. The resolution is set to 12 bits. I am leaving everything to default, as I will use the blocking mode to read the ADC value. Now let's set the LEDs as output. Here you can see in the schematics, we have the red LED connected to the pin PB14. We have a blue LED connected to the pin PB7. We have one more green LED connected to the pin PC7. Let's set these three pins as output in the Cube MX. I am also renaming the pins, so that it will be easier for us to select them in the code. That is all we need to do here, click save to generate the project. I have already created a project in Squareline Studio, I will explain it. There is a text area, where we will display the data received from the UART. I am also using an arc to display the ADC value. Here the range for arc is set between 0 to 100, so we will also map our ADC value within this range. Then we have three switches, which will be used to control the three LEDs on the board. I have also created events for these switches, which will trigger when the switches are clicked. Here we will call these functions, which we will define later in the code. Let's export the UI files. Let me delete the previous UI folder from the project, and we will copy our newly generated UI folder inside it. Here in the UI screen source file, you can see all the components we added to the UI. Alright let's start by writing the event file. Include the main header file. Once the first switch is clicked, the LED1 clicked function will be called. Here we will first check the current state of the switch. You can see all the available states, but we are interested in the checked state. This means that the switch has been enabled. If this happens, we will turn the LED1 on. Otherwise if the state is not checked, which means that the switch is disabled, turn the LED off. Repeat the same for the other functions. That is all we need to do in the event file. Let's go to the main file now. Here after the UI has been initialized, we will receive the data from the UART in the interrupt mode. I am setting the 32 bytes limit here, 
as this is enough to test the UI. Let's define the Rx data array where the received data will be stored. Once all the 32 bytes have been received, or there is an idle line before that, the UART interrupt will trigger, and the Rx event callback will be called. Here we will set the received data to the text area. Now clear the Rx buffer, so that there is no residue from the previous reception. Call the receive to idle function again, as hold disables the interrupt after each call. Now we will write one more function for the ADC read and write to the UI. Let's also define the map function to map the ADC values within a certain range. Inside the ADC read function, we will first start the ADC. Then poll for conversion to complete. Then read the ADC value, and stop the ADC. Now map the ADC value, which can range from 0 to 4095, to the range 0 to 100. And finally we will set the value to the arc defined in the UI. Let's call this ADC function in the while loop. That is all, let's build the code now. We don't have any errors, so let's flash it to the board. Let's see the connection before we proceed with the output. I have already shown the LCD connection in the previous videos, so let's skip that. Here is how the potentiometer is connected to the board. It is powered with 3.3 volts from the board, and the ADC pin is connected to the pin PC0. I am using the virtual COM for the UART, so there is no need to connect any external hardware for the same. But if you do want to use a TTL module, the connection should be as shown here. The RX pin from the board connects to the TX pin of the module and the vice versa. Alright, let's see the working now. Here you can see the UI has been loaded to the display. We will first test the buttons and ADC, and later the UART. You can see the LEDs on board are responding to the switches. Each LED is separately controlled by a switch. The ADC is also responding well. The arc denotes the position of the potentiometer, and is ranging from 0 to 100. Let's see the UART now. I am using this WCH serial port application on my Mac. Let's open the COM port at 115200 board, and 8 data bits with no parity. Send the string hello world. You can see it is displayed on the text area defined for it. Everything is working fine. I have defined the array of 32 bytes in the code, so it can receive up to that limit pretty well. So we were able to send the data to the display, receive the input from it, and also display the ADC value on it. I hope you understood the procedure well. In the next video, I will cover the keyboard, and how we can receive and store the data entered on the display. This is it for today. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.